In this video, I'm going to show you how to analyze and interpret data from a Bradford assay. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to plot the standard curve on a graph, and then from that graph we will find the r-squared value and the equation of the line, and then using that data we will then find the values of the unknowns. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to get the concentrations that we used for the standard curve. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy them from the data from the plate reader. And if you hold the control key, you can copy them all at once without having to do them individually. And so I'm going to copy those. And then I'm going to click the cell that I'm going to paste it into. And then if you go to paste and do paste special, you can tick this box right here telling it to skip blanks and then we'll all go in together without the spaces in between. The next thing that we need to do is find the average absorbance from the data. And so what we're going to do here is we're going to find the average of the absorbance of the different concentrations. I know that the plate reader will give it to you, but some plate readers don't give it to you and you have to do it yourself. Also, sometimes there's a really distinct outlier that you might not want to include, so it's always a good idea to find the average on your own. So I'm going to put an equal sign in. That tells Excel that I'm going to do a formula, and then I'm going to type in the command for average. And then I'm just going to highlight the cells that I want to use for the average. And that will find the average. So I'm just going to continue to do this for all the different concentrations. Just a few more concentrations to do and we'll be done. Oops. French. 125. Another way that we can tell that we don't need to throw out any of the outliers is we can look at our CV values, and you can see that they're all under 10%. So that means that uh, all of our data is pretty tightly uh, spaced together. And the last one. Okay, so now we have the average uh, absorbance reading for all of our different concentrations. And then the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to find the standard deviation of those averages. And we're going to use the standard deviation when we make the graph as the error bars for our data points. So once again, we're going to put an equal sign telling Excel that we are going to do a formula. And then STDEV is the command for standard deviation. And then we're going to go and we're going to highlight those same cells that we used for the average to do our standard deviation. few more to do. Last couple. Okay, so now we've done all of our calculations here that we need to do on this one. So the next thing that we're going to do is we are going to make our graph. So what we're going to do is we're going to highlight the data that we're going to use in our graph. We're not going to highlight the standard deviation right now because we're going to add that in later with our error bars. So then we're going to go to insert. And in this case, we're going to do a scatter plot. 
And there you go. You can see that we now have made our graph using our data. So now the next things that we need to do are we need to put in the title, put in the X and Y axis titles, our error bars, add a trend line, all those sorts of um, attributes on the chart. So the way that we can do that, access those, is by clicking this plus sign. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to add a trend line, and you can see that added our trend line. But then when we click on the arrow, that brings up more options. And here, this is where we can tick this box and this box, and that will display our R-squared value and the formula of the graph. So I'm just going to move that down so it's not right on top of the trend line. So as you can see, our R-squared value is 0.98. You want it to be as close to 1 as possible, depending on the lab that you're in either 0 0.95, 0 0.97 might be considered acceptable R-squared values. And then we also have the formula for the line that we'll use later. But first, let's go ahead and finish the graph. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to add our error bars at the standard deviation. And as you can see here, we'll click error bars. But if we click on this, we'll go to more options. And so what we can do is we're going to go down here and click custom. And this will allow us now to use our standard deviation as our error bar. So click custom and then specify value and it'll bring up uh, this pop-up box and if you click on the grid there you can just highlight what you want to do, what you want to add for the error bars for the positive error bars and the same thing we'll click on that grid and highlight what we're going to use for our negative error bars and then click OK. And we're going to do both because we want both positive and negative, and I like the cap on the end. That's just my personal preference. So then the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to change our chart title. So we can simply highlight this, and we can just type in Bradford Assay. Obviously, you can be much more descriptive in your title. And then the final thing that we're going to do on our graph is we're going to add our axis title. So once again, if you click that plus, we can do axis titles and that'll bring them in and then here we can type in this is our concentration concentration right there and then here on this one we can type in uh, that that is the um, sorbents so now we have all of that labeled you can obviously go in and change the fonts, make them bigger, that sort of thing, but we're not going to go through that in this video. So now the next thing that we need to do is we need to find the value of our unknowns. We need to find the concentration of our unknowns using this formula right here. So to make my life a little bit easier, I'm just going to recopy the formula down here where we're going to be working. So it is y equals 8 times 10 to the negative fifth, and we'll put that in parentheses. And I forgot to put, and we'll put the caret in to tell it that it's the negative fifth, then plus 0 0.227. So that's the formula of the line, and oop, I forgot to put the x in. So now, but here we have our y is absorbance and our x is concentration. So we want to solve for x. So we're going to simply rewrite this where we have x equals uh, parentheses y minus 0 0.22. 7 divided by 8 times 10 to the negative fifth. So that is the formula that we're going to use. So now what we're simply going to do here, oh, I forgot a parentheses right there. So now what we're going to do is we're simply going to use our unknown values here in y, but we're going to first find the average and then we'll plug it into y. So here we're going to find the average of the absorbance of our unknowns. We have equals average and 
for unknown two, it will be those three. And then we'll do the same thing for unknown one. And then we'll delete those cells. And there we go. So now we have the average. So now what we need to do is we need to simply rewrite this formula, but using these cells in place of Y. So what we'll do is we'll put an equal sign because telling the Excel that we're going to put in a formula. And we'll just simply recopy this. The form we'll simply recopy this formula using this in the place of Y. So we'll do that minus 0 0.22. Seven divided by parentheses eight times ten to the negative fifth. And then when we put that in, we get 130. So our concentration of unknown two is 130. And then we'll just do the same thing here. We should just be able to copy this formula and paste it in. And that gives us that the concentration of unknown two is 630. You can see here when I copied the formula from here into here, it brought down and it used the correct cell. So Excel is, does that very, very well that you can copy formulas down and across. So now we have made our graph based on the standard curve from our Bradford results. We have added the trend line, we found the R squared value, the equation of the line, and put in all of our axis labels as well as our error bars. And then using this equation, we have found the values of our unknowns 1 and 2. I hope you find this video helpful. Thank you.